So I've been working on some slides for a workshop that I'm hosting at the Scenic City Summit Conference in Chattanooga. And one of the last things I needed to do was to put together a couple of slides that show a process diagram that is my take on the initial product discovery process, uh, generally for new products or major new features, and then show a version of that process diagram when you augment your workflow with AI. Um, this let, will lead into um, eight different hands-on exercises that we're going to do at the workshop. If that sounds interesting to you, shoot me a note and let me know if you'd be interested in hearing when we launch the workshop in an online format for a broader audience. Um, but I thought that this would be a cool use case to test out AI tools for a diagram. So I created a really basic, like no, no frills prompt to just ask it to create a seven step process diagram. My intent kind of always from the beginning would be to take that and then make my edits. Um, so there's some nuances I want to show in it. And honestly, I, that's better done for me manually um, rather than like have to fight and iterate uh, with AI tools through prompts or I'm um, getting something that went pretty far, but maybe when I try to paste it into a tool that I'm comfortable editing, it like falls apart or I have to rebuild it anyways. Um, our team at Scenic West obviously has spent a lot of time experimenting with AI tools for design and um, especially code for first prototyping. Uh, but I haven't really spent a lot of time using it for more basic graphics. I thought, well, surely an AI tool can nail this, right? It's really simple. Um, but let me show you what I found. Um, and I'm curious if I'm missing an AI tool or what your tips are for better prompting. Um, so we'd love to continue the conversation in comments and um, perhaps in follow-up videos as well. Um, so here's the prompt that I'm going to paste into several tools. And um, what I thought was interesting, so I'm building the slides in Canva. We're mostly going to be off the slide deck doing hands-on exercises, but we have a few things for um, instructions for each exercise and then some key points that we want to kind of do to, to tie the total process together for the group. Um, so I thought, well, let me start with Canva because I was already in the tool. So using Canva AI, I asked for this. I said, you know, I want a process diagram on a presentation slide. So I do did expect it to give me a slide foundation um, or like format layout. Um, but it gave me actual slide decks. They're over styled. I already have a deck. I really just want something that gives me a very basic process diagram. Um, and none of these are really it, right? So, um, you know, I tried to re-specify that, still kind of got the same thing back. Um, and a lot of like made up content, which I think is one of the things that frustrates me about generative AI is like, I mean, you can obviously prompt towards avoiding this, but like, I really don't want it to give me a brand style, a bunch of extra copy. Like the whole point is that I'm creating um, a unique, like one of a kind workshop for my take on something. So like, I don't really want um, the generic AI stuff thrown into it. Um, so let me jump from Canva to ChatGPT. So um, ChatGPT is probably the LLM I use the least, um, but you still hear it regularly. So I wanted to use it as a chance of like, Maybe I'm missing, like maybe I actually should be using ChatGPT more. So I always like to occasionally like, challenge myself to jump into tools that aren't my first go-to just to make sure I'm staying up um, on sort of the latest trends, which tools I should be using for what, things like that. Um, so I asked, um, so I included this prompt, there's some context, I'm gonna use it on a slide, things like that. Um, and it gave me this, uh, and it looks like, yeah, so it gives me a PNG, um, but it's like, one, it's ugly. Two, it's sort of creating this like weird circular thing. And um, I see this in a couple of the other um, outputs that I test for different tools that I tested. But, and I, you know, in some ways it's like, okay, I do get like we're talking about, you can make an assumption that we're probably talking about an agile process and there is sort of an iterative loop. But really for what I'm talking about, like I'm kind of looking just for a left to right per, uh, you know, workflow. That doesn't mean that you don't jump back to different phases or revisit things. It doesn't mean that as you kind of have your initial product discovery done, you might, you know, move into more of like a, a dual track sort of process where, um, you know, design and build and like discovery for the, what's coming next is kind of all happening in motion, right? Um, and so um, in some ways I wasn't surprised, but I'm not sure that that's why that output is there, right? And either way, that's not even a useful starting point for me. Um, so then I, went into Quad. Um, this Quad is a tool that we use regularly. Um, and the first thing it gave me was this output. And I was able to jump from this output uh, to an SVG that did open correctly in Figma. And I've got different like um, groups and the vectors. So um, if this aesthetically or layout wise was closer, like 
that's actually not a bad like um, functional output in terms of like building into a workflow. Obviously, I'm very comfortable with Figma. That would be no big deal to finish creating it here and then take what I wanted as an export and drop it into Canva. That would be perfect. Um, but it has a couple things. We're trying to force like a circular motion here again. It's created some like labeling for different phases. Like that's all interesting. I love that it created a legend. And I actually um, kind of enjoyed these little like AI markers, but um, I wasn't, that wasn't really what I was asking for yet. So again, it's like quad um, tends to do this where it's like, it's gonna embellish a lot. And again, like the, it was a very simple prompt. So there's some improvements I could do there. Um, but I do like this output overall. I don't like the aesthetics of it. I'd be fighting with this more. So like, again, at the end of the day, I might um, really just do this myself, but maybe I might like grab like, oh, I kind of like this little legend layout. I can reuse that. I can reuse the little AI marker, um, but maybe not the rest of the content. So maybe something there could probably have iterated to get this better. Um, the first time I ran through this, I actually I couldn't recreate it or find it in one of my old chats, um, but I did want to call out that um, it, at one point created an interactive artifact is the first thing. So it was interesting. I was actually expecting, I guess I hadn't diagrammed in quad in a minute, but I was expecting it to give me a mermaid output that I would then go edit in mermaid chart, um, which I'll show in a minute. Um, but it gave me this, which I mean is better, right? Like it's for a presentation. So I think that was in the right direction. So I would think quad is promising in this category. Um, but it also, the first time I did this, it gave me an interactive one that was like, um, and this one, like the layout isn't great, but um, it had like all of the circles were interactive and there was content below it, but like the layout was weird. The interaction pattern or usability was wrong. Um, so it was like, it was just way more than I needed, but it was also not correct or useful. So um, I think that was interesting, but I'm calling that out just to say that like, I think quad maybe will get this like sort of need right soon. Um, jumping over to mermaid chart, uh, it looks like I can't see the prompt right now, but um, copy and paste the prompt in, got this back. This is really basic, but in some ways it's kind of what I need. Um, I can grab an SVG. I can certainly edit in Mermaid, which is part of why I was thinking like, oh, this, you know, a slide for honestly an audience of mostly engineers, like it needs to be correct in terms of content, it needs to be readable, all the things, and should have a certain level of design standard since we are a design uh, and strategy group. But, um, you know, this was okay, just, was a little underwhelming. Um, we do like mermaid chart and using quads outputs as mermaid charts uh, for things like user flow diagrams. Sometimes they're a little bit overkill, like they're way too elaborate. I think I might have one that we're using for the workshop. Um, so like something that's like a create a simple user flow diagram for a time tracking tool. And it'll spit something out like this, which isn't necessarily completely wrong, but it's just not like if I'm an early product discovery, I'm really just trying to illustrate a couple basic workflows. like. Um, this is a little hard to read. It's hard for a group to like um, coalesce around and maybe like on the go or asynchronously edit something. So um, in some ways there's an, even an argument. Um, one thing we talk about in our workshop is um, knowing when to use the right type of output for fast collaboration, especially when you need human input at different checkpoints. So like a text-based user flow diagram might actually be the right output. So asking Quad to do that, for example, um, pasting that into say like a Slack, like Canvas and, and inviting a few people in your project team to edit something like they can literally make those comments or edits on their phone. I think that's interesting. So like, don't forget, it's not just about the output, but it's what you need to do with it. Um, and that's not just, oh, I need to paste it into Figma if you're a designer and things like that. It's also, who do I need to weigh in on this? Who do I need to collaborate with? And what's the right format to do that and do it faster than I usually would have done it. So like AI should be moving us faster, but in a productive way, right? So always kind of checking, it's not just content, but it's that like, workflow collaboration, all the things um, that kind of wrap around it. Um, for the quad output and Mermaid, um, experimented with just dropping in the SVG into Figma. The first time I tried it from the Mermaid diagram, it gave me this, which um, is broken or not great. Um, I didn't look super closely if there's like different things, like it might be fixable or honestly, I might be able to fix it by like re-exporting it or doing it a couple different things. Didn't bother because it's like not that um, interesting of a uh, user flow or like a diagram. So it wasn't quite right for what I wanted. I'm not even sure. It looks like I might've lost it. Um, tried it in Miro. Uh, we don't use Miro super often as a team. We do like the tool. We, we have clients that use it, things like that. Um, but we try to not 
uh, when we're working especially with clients, we try not to like have them have to collaborate with us in Figma and Miro and all these other things. We kind of go Figma centric, um, but that's changing as we're introducing more AI tools and other collaboration points for groups. Um, it spit this out the second time. So the first one, it did this weird thing where like, it did take a literal execution of what I asked for, but for some reason it gave it a different um, shape for each thing. And then like, because of the way it's aligning, it's like all the arrows are crooked, which drives me nuts. Um, the second round of it, I just said like, hey, can you use the same shapes and specifically just use rounded rectangles connected by arrows. So keep it simple, right? Um, let's see if I can get to that one. So then it gave me um, these, which wasn't quite the shape I meant for it to pull, but better. And the alignment, I can fix that. That's not a huge deal, but it was just such a basic output. Like that doesn't really save me time, right? Um, and it's like, I want it to be left to right because what I actually want to do is my next step, and I'll show the final output in a second, um, is that I want to have like content underneath each of the phases. Um, so there's like a, some layout considerations. I didn't give it in the prompt because I didn't know that it mattered, but like, um, it was just interesting to see that this one like did like a vertical thing, would be fit quick to, to move um, layout wise, or even probably interact with this and change that. But um, I think Miro probably is a viable solution again for uh, maybe user, I haven't tested actually for user flow diagramming where it's creating the user flow, but um, if you have like a text-based thing and you wanna put it into a visual, that would be super easy for it to handle. And I'm sure it can probably handle the other use case if I had to guess as well. Um, let me pause and I'll pull up where I landed. Okay, before I show you where I ended up creating one myself, uh, long story short, that was ultimately the best solution for me um, for the specific use case that I had. Um, but I did play around with Figma Make as well. So I just ran it through the same prompt and um, this version is actually a lot better than the, what I got earlier when I tried. So the first time I got this, it was um, simpler boxes, lack of color, didn't have maybe the icons. Um, it still did this kind of funky thing where it wrapped and like the arrow in this um, div Looks like my, oh, here we go, did that work? Let me pause and see if I can get that to work. Okay, so I had to remove some of my recording UI, but um, this little like point select to edit um, tool, one like in some earlier videos I watched of other people demoing this, it was up here, they moved it down here and like honestly, I thought in general like the how to edit something specific, like I think most of us would expect, I mean, it's Figma, right? So I kind of thought I'd be able to like move things around. Um, it looks like what Figma Make is really going after is that code first um, prototyping tool, like I think Lovable and some of the other ones. Um, I think that's fine, but um, I'm very curious to see where they go with uh, iterating on this product and other AI features that they have, because so far it just feels like they're missing the mark a little bit in terms of like, I would just have expected them to make a leap forward or maybe I was just hoping that, right? Um, that all the things I want AI design and prototyping tools to do in terms of how they play with Figma I mean, gosh, I thought Figma would solve it first, right? Um, but, you know, I think innovation sometimes happens faster in smaller startups and things like that. And um, it's kind of fun to watch how it all plays out from a product strategy standpoint as somebody who works with, um, you know, different product teams day in and day out. Um, so here I had oh, not deselected. So just to show, like, you can, like, select a div and you can, I think, ask for changes to this div. And, uh, you know, I could probably ask it to say, hey, take, you know, the two rows and make them all linear and things like that. But... Um, anytime you start having it make a bunch of edits and there's just these different layout things that are a little off, like that starts getting into a place where is it better for me to take this idea and run with it and like rebuild in some ways in the tool of my choice, or is it faster for me to kind of like fight with it? Um, I think that's going to rapidly advance, right? So I think for whatever friction we're feeling today in that um, category, like that's not going to be where we're at, hopefully even like three months from now, but certainly a year from now, it'll be a lot different. Um, so I always encourage my team to like keep experimenting, try it, but like move away when it's not working. Um, so that's not to say we won't solve this or AI won't solve this, but, um, you know, in some cases we're not, not there yet. And I think teams need to really think quickly about like, is some, when is the experimentation worth the time? When is that for learning? And when is it to actually move our workflow automation or, you know, forward? Um, and there's just like a lot of things to balance. There's also going to be points in time where it's like actually better to do it yourself because the whole point of it is for it to have a unique point of view or expertise um, on, and that can apply to product work as well, of course. Um, so anyways, this wasn't bad, but my biggest gripe with Figma Make is like, 
going from this into a Figma file where I would just like fix the things that, that are in here wrong. Um, and that, again, it being more going after the code first tool, like I think I'm assuming what, what it's gonna do best is, is still more in that UX UI design and prototyping category, and that's fine. I was trying it for the diagram. Okay, so let me show you what I ended up doing, but um, as you've probably gathered at this point, um, I ended up just creating it manually in my Canvas slides. Um, part of that was because there was some content I knew that I wanted to layer on top, and just to get all of that to flow correctly and show like kind of like a before and after AI point of view and like current take on when you should and should not use AI for product discovery specifically, especially for early stage products or like the initial discovery you do for like a new product concept or new feature concept. Um, so let me just show that. I'll do a separate video that walks through this, but um, basically I've got a diagram here. It's super simple. Like there's some other diagrams I allude to from other sources that show different takes on like agile product discovery. Um, and those all have great context, but like from a simplistic standpoint, um, really we're more or less working through these phases. And at any point where you learn something major that's new, you might like flip back. So there is like a validation and iteration cycle even within this. But really your goal at this point is to go from an idea to um, collecting information, kicking off with the right group, project group and stakeholder group, research, refining your vision, design and iteration, ultimately a prototype that you validate. Um, and then you're kind of moving into a, a planning phase that's going to feed into your existing agile workflows. Um, and so there's more iteration and like ongoing validation. Um, we call it like our agile customer feedback loop once a product is launched. Um, but this sort of process feeds into that in terms of like going from zero to one, right? And so there's, these are not an exhaustive list, but each one I have like three examples of key things we do in those stages. And then I build to um, one that shows when I would use uh, team and AI collaboration, when I would use AI kind of forward workflows, and then when I would intentionally not include AI in the process because they're key steps for aligning making decisions, collecting feedback, refining in a way that you want to make sure that your strategic decisions are truly going to be a unique product and competitively differentiated. Um, so more on that process later, but just to show kind of my end result was that I ended up not using AI at all, which I thought was kind of a fun um, case study on different tools.